I'd like to remind myself and my brothers with three important hadith about companionship in order to serve the topic here presented by this great scholar. Companionship is extremely important and very effective in either being a source of guidance for a person or a source of destruction and confusion. Misguidance for a person is not a very simple matter. Listen, our Prophet said in Sahih al-Bukhari, from the narration of Abu Musa radiallahu anhu. He said, مَثَلُ الْجَلِيسِ الصَّالِحِ وَالسَّوْئِ The example of a good companion and a bad one, كَحَامِلِ الْمِسْكِ وَنَافِخِ الْكِيرِ is the example of a perfume salesman and a blacksmith. فَحَامِلُ الْمِسْكِ إِمَّا أَنْ يُحْرِيَكَ The perfume salesman is either going to give you a gift وَإِمَّا أَنْ تَبْتَعْ مِنْهِ or you're going to buy some of his perfume. Either way, what happens? You have a good smell and a good scent and a good impact has been made on you from companionship with him. Or even without that, no gift and no buying, you're still going to, even through being near him, you're going to smell good. All of it's good. No matter what interaction you have with a good companion, it's all good. You're going to be better than you were before that companionship. However, the blacksmith, he's either going to burn your clothes directly because of the nature of his work, or you're going to find, as a result of your companionship with him, at least a terrible foul smell. And this is a beautiful parable. Good companionship has fruits, and bad companionship has its terrible effects on a person. This is clarified further by another hadith from our Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam collected by the Imams Abu Dawood and At-Tirmidhi in their Sunan, it's an authentic Hassan narration from the report of Abu Huraira radiyallahu anhu he said that the Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said الرجل على دين خليله a man is upon the religion of his khalil, of his close friend the word deen here can be as large as encompassing as the entire religion. You're upon the religion of your friend. And the word deen can also refer to ta'a and disobedience. You're upon the level of obedience and disobedience as your companions are. And how true that is. How true that is. Birds of a feather flock together. So the Prophet said, a man is upon the deen of his companion. فَلْيَنْظُرْ أَحَدُكُمْ مَنْ يُخَالِلْ so let each of you look carefully, contemplate about who he takes as a khalil, who he takes as a companion. Extremely important. In one narration, فَلْيَنْظُرْ أَحَدُكُمْ مَنْ يُخَالِطُ Let a person think carefully about who he mixes with, يُخَالِط, مُخَالِطُ To mix with people. And the last one is one that you don't typically hear being mentioned in the topic of companionship. However, the insight in this hadith about companionship is subtle, and as soon as you discover it, you say, that is amazing. Listen to this hadith. It's from the collection of Al-Mu'jam Al-Kabir by the Imam Al-Tabarani, rahimahullah ta'ala. And he said from the narration of Abdullah ibn Abbas, that the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, مَا مِنْ عَبْدٍ مُؤْمِنٍ there's no believing servant. No believing servant exists in La except except he has a sin. There's no believer except with a sin. And you know, Kullum Bani Adam Khatta. All of the sons of Adam they are continually committing errors. The best of those who continually err are the ones who repent much. Right? Back to this hadith. No believing servant exists except he has a sin. I said, we're going to connect those earlier ideas to this hadith, or to a very important hadith, and this is it here. There's no pious person except he has some sinful behavior. It doesn't exist. There's no pious person through and through all piety, and no flaws and no sins. It doesn't exist. And this is from the speech of our messenger, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. He negated this concept of a pious person with no sin at all. There's no believing servant. He named him a mu'min, no mu'min, no believer, except that he has a then. He falls into it, 
every now and then. And fina بعد الفينة, time after time. أو ذنب هو مقيم عليه. Or he has a sin that he does consistently. The first case, he does a sin occasionally. That's one option, that's one possibility of a believer. The second possibility is that he has a sin as well, that he never abandons. He is persistent upon a sin. لا يفارقه حتى يفارق الدنيا. He never leaves it until he leaves this dunya. It's a sinner. You should be saying, where is the connection to companionship? You're looking for it, right? Because these are narrations about companionship. What does this have to do with companionship? Everything here is about, so far, the reality of pious people, that they will have a sin. Either something that they commit occasionally, or something that they commit persistently. Where's the companionship? The Prophet ﷺ said, إِنَّ الْمُؤْمِنَ خُلِقَ مُفَتَّنَا The believer has been created in a trial, in a fitna. تَوَّابًا نَسِيًّا Between these two stations. Tawab, he's either Tawab, always repenting, or Nasi, forgetting. This is your case. Right now, you are between these two stations, and hopefully closer to the station of Tawab. Hopefully closer to the station of being someone who repents often. Every person is between those two stations. Either total forgetfulness, overwhelming forgetfulness, somewhere in the middle, lots of forgetfulness and lots of remembering. Mostly remembering, not much forgetfulness, or remembering all the time. And you can't stay really at that station, right? Because every person will have a sin. There's going to be some distraction sooner or later. Right? So between these two stations, you are always, you know, fluctuating. And it's not the case that you're on one level. You're fluctuating back and forth. You have your times with strong iman, where you, you are closer to the side of devoutly repenting continually. And you have your times of weakness where you go closer to the other side. May Allah Ta'ala save us. The hadith ends with three words that connect us to our topic. When he's reminded, this is the case of the believer. When he's reminded, he remembers. Like I said, the connection is subtle. The believer is between these two stations. Forgetfulness and remembering and repenting. What is it that pushes him towards the side of remembering and repenting, what's the one factor that the hadith ends with? It's companionship. If he's reminded, then he remembers. It's that you're in this struggle between these two stations, and you have a companion who says, come on, let's go drink something. Let's go smoke something. Then where's he pushing you towards? He's pushing you away from the side of being a tawab, pushing you towards nesi, pushing you towards being a person of forgetfulness, and heedlessness. Or you have a companion who says, let's go to the masjid a little early. It's getting close to Maghrib time. Let's be on our way to the masjid. Let's get wudu from the house. So every step that we take from the house with wudu, with the intention to go to the masjid, a right step is a degree earned, a left step is a sin forgiven. Let's get that. Let's not just go to the masjid. Let's go to the masjid and have our sins forgiven on the way. You have this good companion. Then what happens? You have this inclination towards bad behavior. And your companion is there with you saying what? Let's go to the masjid. Let's study something. Let's go to the class. Right? Let's learn something from one of the scholars. Let's study an ayah. Let's study a hadith. And so on. So then you're, you gravitate away from neglect, forgetfulness, heedlessness, and sinful behavior. And you gravitate towards where your companion helps you go. Towards obedience. Towards repentance. Towards fulfilling your purpose as a real servant and slave of Allah Ta'ala. This is what Allah Ta'ala has made easy for us to review on this day. We ask Allah Ta'ala that He bless us with good companions in this life and in the next. And we ask Allah Ta'ala that He allow us to understand that our good companions in this life are flawed. And that He allows us to be patient with each other. وَجَعَلْنَا بَعْضُكُمْ لِبَعْضٍ فِتْنَةً أَتَصْبِرُونَ he has made some of you to be a trial for others. Will you be patient? Allahu Akbar. We ask Allah Ta'ala that He grant us patience with each other. And we ask Allah Ta'ala that He give us insight into the meaning of companionship and the benefit of good companionship. One last point. That is the reality of flawed companionship. The reality of good, pious companionship that is essentially flawed. 
a slip happens and an insult takes place and disrespect happens. This cannot split us up. We have to realize the overall relationship here is we are people working together upon one aqidah, people who work together upon one methodology, people who are sharing the same goals, and we are humans who have flaws, and because of those flaws, we clash sometimes. We cannot allow those clashes to separate us, because that's what the shaitan wants from us. And he doesn't have an angle that's correct if we understand our religion, to say to you, why can't my brother respect me? Why can't he say words that are appropriate? Why can't he interact with me in a way that is courteous and kind? Why does he treat me like this sometimes? Why, does, why are these flaws there, you know? We're supposed to love each other for the sake of Allah. Then why did he get frustrated with me and say a word to me that was disrespectful? We say, check this out. The reality is, Allah Ta'ala has described the muttaqeen and their situation in paradise. In many verses in the Qur'an, one of the descriptions He's given to them, is are the pious people who have earned paradise, and the affair is over. وَنَزَعْنَا مَا فِي صُدُورِهِمْ مِنْ غِلٍ إِخْوَانًا عَلَىٰ سُرَرٍ مُتَقَابِلِينَ And we have plucked out, we have extracted from their chests the ghil, the rancor that was in their chests. And we've made them brothers, sitting upon beds and relaxing, looking at each other, enjoying each other's company. The people of paradise had flawed relationships. They had ghil, they had rancor in their hearts, a level of that. We don't want that. We don't say that's perfectly fine. We work to rid ourselves of that. But the reality is, you won't find two people coming together and they click perfectly. There's always going to be a clash here and there. We cannot allow the shaitan to capitalize on those moments. We have to say, this is my brother in aqidah, this is my brother in Islam, this is my brother in faith, my brother in the obedience of Allah, and he has transgressed against me. May Allah forgive him. You know, beg Allah Ta'ala to forgive him for his mistake. And realize that overall, our relationship is a must for me to be a pious worshiper of Allah. I need people like him around me. And I have to be patient with his slips. As I hope he would be patient with my slips. And then, when there's something in the heart that remains there, you really can't excuse him and forgive him, you stay together. And when it's all said and done, if we are people of paradise, as we enter paradise, that amount of rancor, enmity that might exist in the hearts, that keeps us from being fully, you know, beloved brothers in a total state, we enter paradise as totally pure brothers who love each other for the sake of Allah, that rancor having been removed. That rancor is a must for this life. Imagine that Allah has described the pious inhabitants of paradise as those whom He has removed the ghil from their hearts. That means it was there. So if we understand this reality, we can be realistic with each other. And we can lower our expectations for that perfect brotherhood. And whoever wants perfect brotherhood, flawless companionship and flawless brotherhood, then he works for paradise because that's where it is. In this life, the brotherhood is flawed and the companionship is tainted. But you look for the best of it and may Allah Ta'ala allow us to salvage the best of what we have in this life. And may He allow us to get to our graves and be buried upon Iman, upon faith in Him, Tawheed and obedience to Him. Wassalamu wa sallam wa baraka ala Nabiya Muhammadin wa ala alihi wa sahbihi ajma'in.